Hi, Taria. Thank you so much for joining me today. You have such an incredible and inspiring story. For those of us who don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so to kind of give you a brief intro into who I am and and what my story is. My name is Taria. In 2011, I was working as an engineer in Outback Australia. I entered an ultramarathon, which uh, an ultramarathon is over 50 kilometres. So I entered an ultramarathon. I was trapped by a grass fire a quarter of the way through the race. Um, I received burns to 65% of my body. I was chopped out of that remote desert, barely alive. I spent two years in and out of hospital. I've had uh, close to 200 operations. I was told that I would never run again. And since then, I've done Ironman World Championships. I've written four best-selling books. I've coached 40,000 people through my online programs. I've done the Kokoda Trek. I've sailed a boat around French Polynesia. I've taken on really big, amazing physical challenges. And the best thing is I've had two beautiful boys with my partner, Michael. Wow, that inspires me. But I want to know how you do it. I'd like to learn what inspires you. What really gets you going? What gets you excited? Yeah, I mean, all sorts of things get me excited. Um, I get excited if I go on Pinterest and I'm looking at birthday cakes that I can make for my sons um, or house tiles that I could get. Um, I get inspired by looking at people that I look up to. So, you know, Michelle Obama, Beyonce, people like that. Social media is amazing because you get a real insight into those types of people and the sort of things that they do in their lives. Um, But if I'm thinking about even bigger than those things, I think what excites me is finding uh, solutions to problems. So I'm an engineer, so I get really excited about stuff like that. And it doesn't mean, you know, massive problems like ending world hunger or halting climate change, even though for sure there's things that we as individuals have so much power to be able to 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 contribute to those things. Um, But I think just things like, you know, how do I improve the invoice system in my business or how do I make sure people walk away from my talk with Pinterest feeling like they've gotten something really meaningful things like that finding solutions to things like that uh, I I find it really motivating yeah that's excellent and so from your recent 2020 University of New South Wales graduation speech you speak about adaptation and about pivoting and reinvention so I'd like for you to share for us why this is so important to you yeah I think it's important because you know, being able to adapt and being able to pivot and being able to reinvent ourselves is crucial. But I don't think it's ever been as important as it has been in the year of 2020 and to a certain extent, Mm. the start of the year 2021. I think it would be amazing if we could learn about resilience and grit and gumption by sitting on a phone call, listening to someone talk about those subjects. But I believe the only way we learn resilience is by going through the hard times the only way we get grittier is by testing ourselves. And the only way we get more gumption is by really showing up when things get tough. And I think, you know, the past year has been a massive lesson in all of those things for so many of us around the world. Yeah, I agree with you there. And so in the same speech, you talk about changing your focus. And I'd like for you to share us a little bit about when you realised that moment and the importance of that message. Was it an aha moment? Was there a light bulb that went off in your head or is that something gradually happened over time? I think it probably happened gradually over time that the need to change your focus is so important, not just for me, but for all of us. But I think that idea was really crystallized when I was in hospital, when I was learning how to stand up again. And I remember just leaning on these two physios, sobbing and crying, howling with the agony of it all. And I always get asked what the hardest moment of my whole journey was and I think it was that that moment in time of learning how to stand again because it was in that moment that I realized you know I can't even stand up by myself so how the hell am I going to be able to walk again run again go back to work compete again and so I realized really early on that that moment in fact that I couldn't spend all my energy focusing on what my future may or may not look like but what I could do is put my focus and energy into creating a really great life for myself. And I think that's why for me, that goal of doing an Ironman one day was so important because it allowed me to shift my focus away from what had happened to me, this catastrophic event that I'd survived, 
it allowed me to shift my focus away from that event into creating a really beautiful and energetic life for myself. Now, credit to you for sticking at it. And credit to, congratulations for publishing your third book called Happy and Other Ridiculous Aspirations. Without giving it away for everyone, tell us what's the one thing you'd like us to take away from that book? I think there's a lot of different things I learned whilst writing this book on happiness. The main thing I learned, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but part of happiness is accepting that we're not going to be happy all of the time. So, you know, some days we feel amazing, energetic, enthusiastic, motivated, excited, and other days we might feel lethargic, annoyed, irritated, down, angry. And I think all of those emotions are perfectly normal. They're perfectly natural human emotions. And I don't think we get to cherry pick and just choose those positive emotions without allowing ourselves to feel those uh, negative emotions. So I think if you're ever feeling annoyed or irritated or sad or down or whatever it is, it's a really helpful strategy to just accept it and say, you know what, I feel annoyed. That's okay. It's part of life. It's just an emotion. It will pass. Mm. Powerful stuff. Okay, so you're an accomplished author, you have a podcast, you've coached thousands of people, you compete in Iron Woman, you run a family. What's your secret? Uh, What's my secret? I think, look, it's my secret to my success, I guess, isn't really a secret. It's just that I am consistent with whatever I'm doing. So if I'm wanting to write a book, you know, I don't just write it miraculously over one night. I'm sitting down every day at my computer first thing in the morning writing a thousand words or writing 500 words or whatever it is. If I'm training for you know a, a triathlon, I'm not just rocking up at the starting line thinking, hey, I'm just gonna um, you know just have a go. I'm doing the training beforehand. I'm at the pool swimming laps, I'm on my bike doing kilometers. I'm out on the trails running um and so what with whatever it is you're trying to achieve in your life or or your business or whatever it is just remind yourself that things amazing things aren't achieved overnight success isn't a giant cataclysmic event um really there's a lot of hard work and a lot of grind that goes on behind the scenes um we've got to be able to own that process so tell me about your newest endeavor run with taria you created this for mums what's the inspiration behind this program i created my program run with taria Uh, I guess the inspiration behind it was was myself because I wanted a program like this when I first started getting back into running after my first son. You know, I wanted a program where I I was accountable and where there was coaching feedback. But I also wanted a program where I felt like I could relate to the other members in the course, you know, all of those things. And so this program was designed for mums who want to run. There's different um, kilometers that they can do. They can do a five kilometer program if they're just starting out, or they could do a half marathon if they really want to um, push themselves or stretch themselves. Um, and so I guess if I was to say who the inspiration was, I think it was myself, really. I created it because it was something that I, that I would want. That's an incredible message. Okay, we're going to move now to a couple of rapid speed questions. Don't think too much. Just give us the answers from the heart. So Okay. What's your favorite thing to search for on Pinterest right now? Um, lots of different things. I've got a board called House Fix Ideas, and there's all sorts of crazy things in there from uh, indoor indoor swimming pools to uh, colors for the boys' bedrooms. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm searching for on Pinterest at the moment. Okay, so what's the craziest or the hardest thing you've done in the last year, and would you do it again? I think the hardest thing I've done in the last year is giving birth to my second son, Rahidi. Uh, would I do it again? Look, he's only 11 months old, so a little bit a little bit too early for that. Uh, you need a breather for sure. Tell me about this lamp in the background, the white lamp. Where'd you get that? Um, I, I, don't, I don't actually know. It was a gift from my mum, but you could probably figure out where I got it from by using the, the lens function on the Pinterest app. Of course. <laughs> And lastly, when COVID is finally over, can we go for a run? I would love to take you for a run with me, Ryan. You can come down the south coast and I can show you some of the beautiful trails we have around here. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us, Taria. Thank you for spending the time to chat. And for everyone at home, follow Taria on Pinterest. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Ryan. It's been great speaking with you. Thanks a lot.